Thank you very much. I was the one that was actually sighing with relief here. Um, I'm not going to keep you long. I know the food and the booze is coming, so I'm not going to keep you. I did want to uh, mention that uh, we are a public company. Um, so while you're memorizing this, I want to point out that we have a new person here from Pluristem. Her name is Dr. Elite Manar Shashar. She's around here somewhere. Can she, there you are. Stand up. Stand up. She just joined us as our uh, VP of Business Development. So let's play. I've got a movie for you. I just, it's a draft of a movie, actually, but I just got it yesterday, and I'm excited to play it for you. Can you? Throughout history, mankind has made many significant discoveries in the field of medicine. Those may have seemed strange at the time, but nowadays we cannot imagine our lives without them. Pluristem Therapeutics is a biotechnology company that is developing off-the-shelf cell therapies, converting the miracle of childbirth to therapeutics for all. Using advanced and patented technology, Pluristem extracts therapeutic cells from the placenta, traditionally regarded as medical waste. Pluristem is developing state-of-the-art cellular products, targeting unmet needs to improve the quality of life for millions of people. Pluristem expands placental-derived cells with the use of the company's unique 3D technology that allows for the controlled, large-scale growth of cells. The whole process takes place in a state-of-the-art GMP manufacturing facility using unique and advanced machinery, a proprietary bioreactor system where we perform automated large-scale cell growth. This allows PLX cells to be mass-produced with batch-to-batch -batch consistency for a fraction of the cost of traditionally expanding cells using Petri dishes or tissue flasks. Pluristem's 3D expansion technology allows for the production of specific PLX cell products for a variety of individual health-related needs. With a variety of products, each of them preconditioned for a specific purpose, ensuring the best possible treatment for all. PLX cells act by secreting therapeutic proteins in response to signals produced by the inflamed and ischemic area in the body. By communicating with the body, PLX cells work with nature to provide blood to the body's ischemic areas. PLX cells grown with Pluristem's 3D technology are barcoded during their manufacturing process, which allows the company to fully protect their intellectual property. Pluristem offers specific PLX products for a number of health issues, such as peripheral and cardiovascular diseases, orthopedic diseases, pulmonary diseases, preeclampsia, and hematological diseases. Fluorstein team believe that cell therapy is the next generation of biological products. The potential market we are targeting is dozens of billions of dollars. PLX cells has the potential to cure patients that cannot find an existing drug that can help them. The PLX cells can improve the quality of life of millions of people around the world. So that gentleman that uh, was just speaking, that was Zami Abraman, our chairman and, and CEO. Uh, just to point out a couple of things that, uh, <clears throat> that the uh, movie did, uh, I think, briefly uh, tell us, and that is we're using uh, the placenta as our source of raw material, and the cells that, we, that come out of our three-dimensional manufacturing process are called placental expanded cells, or PLX cells for short. Uh, and we believe these cells can treat a variety of inflammatory and ischemic disorders. We've pioneered the use of, we have several data points now to suggest that we can use our cells intramuscularly uh, and get a systemic effect and therefore uh, do not have to use the intravenous route administration. Um, importantly, we can take as the, start, as the um, starting uh, cell for raw material, the placental cell, and manufacture specific PLX products. What I mean by that is that we can manufacture products where the secretome of the cell is different with each product, and that's how we're measuring the, the products. And uh, this is really because of this three-dimensional expansion process and the fact that we can control the environment in which the cells uh, grow very precisely. Um, this is our initial product candidate pipeline. I say initial because we do have others that uh, we're working on, other indications 
but wanted to point out uh, one in particular, and that's in the area of women, women's health, in the area of preeclampsia. I'm ex particularly excited about this indication because there really is no therapy for these patients. And Wednesday, we actually have uh, been awarded uh, the opportunity to present a poster. Uh, so that's the plug to come Wednesday to look at this poster. And it basically is uh, the results of an animal trial where preeclamptic animals were uh, given our PLX cells and with dramatic reductions in the animal's blood pressure and proteinuria. So just to quickly uh, go over some of our clinical trials that either have occurred or in progress or will shortly start. And the first is in the area of critical limb ischemia, the end stage of peripheral artery disease. This is a phase one, two study that has been completed. It was uh, 27 patients. It was a dose escalating, or I should say a dose finding study. And uh, the uh, endpoints at three months were, uh, you know, quite nice in terms of blood flow, pain score, et cetera. But really what the regulators on both sides of the uh, pond want to see is amputation-free survival. This was an open um, uh, study, so the uh, control was used, uh, was published historical data. But the trend was very nice, was 85% amputation-free survival rate. And what I mean by that is at the end of one year, did you die or did you get your leg amputated? And with 85% amputation uh, survival rate, that was a good trend and went to the uh, regulators, and actually the, it was a, a joint effort between the EMA and the FDA. They said, why don't you go back and try using your cells in intermittent claudication, the lesser severity of peripheral artery disease. This is the study that we're currently enrolling. It's a 150 patient, um, again, um, dose uh, finding study. This is a randomized double control study. We have a, uh, 13 sites in the United States, three in, uh, in Europe, one in Israel, and I believe one that's going to also start shortly in uh, South Korea as well. Um, the end point for that study, by the way, is the treadmill examination. It's not amputation-free survival, so uh, a six-minute treadmill walk at the end of one year. Um, the uh, second study that has been completed, actually, is in the area of muscle injury. This was a European study that um, uh, was a, uh, a dose-ranging study as well. And the surrogate for muscle injury, and this is really our entree into sports medicine, but the surrogate were patients that were having their hips replaced and having a prosthesis put into their hip. Uh, the gluteal muscle is significantly traumatized when the prosthesis is put in there. So what we did is we injected ourselves post-operatively into the affected gluteal muscle, and then rehabilitation endpoints uh, will be uh, assessed at six months. So we should have data here uh, in the first part of next year. I uh, wanted to mention the pulmonary arterial hypertension study. This is um, partnering with our, one of our uh, collaborators, which is United Therapeutics. Their focus is pulmonary hypertension, uh, and they've been approved and will soon start an open-label study uh, in the area of pulmonary hypertension in Australia. Uh, we had a very short uh, study, about six weeks, so we'll be able to get data the first quarter of next year. Uh, I just wanted to quickly also mention our IP status because it wasn't covered in the movie. Uh, we now have 26 granted a, uh, patents and 95 applications. It's kind of a four-tier strategy. The uh, basis for the IP is this three-dimensional expansion technology that uh, actually came out of a co-collaboration between the Wiseman Institute and Technion. We've since purchased that technology so we don't owe any royalties uh, to either of those institutions. Uh, the cells that come out of our three-dimensional um, process, as I mentioned, are unique, so we're filing composition of matter patents uh, on those cells, as well as patents surrounding the use of those cells for whatever indication we're, we're aiming for. We've also, um, and again, it's cutting-edge stuff. No one's ever done this before, so we've had actually had to invent our own machines to make the process so efficient uh, that uh, we're able to... Um, uh, we don't even touch the placental cell after it leaves the placenta uh, at all. And so it's totally automated, totally computerized, and we've had to actually invent a few uh, instruments to help us along the way, including a thawing device and uh, a cell separation device and things like that, and we're also uh, patenting those. So that's going to be the end of this talk, so you guys can get out of here. <laughs>